everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today because we are here to talk about some family drama and maybe some chicken mixed in there. We're talking about the Chicken Sisters episodes two through five. And then we will be doing a recap of episodes six, seven, and eight. And the and talking about the whole season as a whole, maybe the whole series <laughs> as a whole. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Elisa Lucas is here. Hello. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Ready to talk about some chicken drama. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it should be. Did it, did it inspire you at all watching these to go and get some chicken? Um, no, but I thought about making my own chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What do you, do you, do you roast it or do you, are you brave and fry it? Here, here's the thing. I don't usually cook chicken. So the fact okay. that I thought about cooking chicken <laughs> is like legendary. Yeah. So you <laughs> just the, got to the like thought process. You didn't yes. go past that. Oh no, okay. no, no. Cause I am like, oh, do I bake it? Yeah. I have to figure stuff out. I'm like, <laughs> but That's I probably funny. wouldn't fry it. I might do an yeah. air fryer. I have an air no, fryer. So. You have an air fryer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't gotten on that bandwagon yet, but mm. you know, eventually I will because I love kitchen yeah. gadgets. I yeah. Just... <laughs> well, I'm su- if you love kitchen gadgets, I'm surprised that you haven't. I know one yet. I know it is. It's surprising. So I missed that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, because I've already got like my rice cooker and I've got my pressure cooker and I've got my you know all that. <laughs> toaster obviously yeah uh so yes uh and but i did have chicken several times this week so i think it's it's inspiring me (laughs) yeah well that's good yeah Yeah. i want to eat someone else's fried chicken that would be nice but um (laughs) but yeah i usually don't make chicken i'm always afraid it's not going to be cooked right and i always feel like the temperature thing doesn't work. I don't know. I'm a big baby about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you tend to cook if you cook? Um, I what do I casseroles? No, <laughs> things in the do a lot of ground beef or <laughs> no. What do I do? Oh my god, do I eat? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. What do I make? I go, well, I have ADHD, so I go through phases of food. Yeah. So I'll go through eggs a lot, and then I'll go through, like, garbanzo beans and that sort of thing, so. Yeah. I feel that. That, that, that. (laughs) I do that, too. I'll be in, like, a a sandwich phase, then all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not very creative, let's be real. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's talk about the chicken sisters and, uh, and we, I have, it's very exciting. So I have an interview with the author. I not only finished the book, but I have an interview with the author, KJ Del Antonio that I did this last week. Uh, that was really fun. So that will That's air amazing. next. Yeah. That'll air next week. Uh, so you get to hear her story about how she, uh, she, and, was able to write this very you know successful book and i always find that very inspiring (laughs) did you ask her what she thought of the show yeah we talked a little bit about it and because it is quite different the the biggest difference between the show and the book is there really isn't that much as far as romance in the book it's it's way more like there's more for may then really for Amanda, like she has a little bit of drama, but the whole thing in the book, Sergio, his name is Andy. And it's yeah. not like nearly like they added pretty much that whole subplot. And got it. And which is kind of crazy. Like, yeah, that they did that. And you just, you read the book and you're like, this seems like the last book that would be interesting to Hallmark. And I asked her about that. I was like, were you surprised that, that they were interested in a book with so little romance? She's like, Oh yeah. They were trying to kind of spread their wings, which cool, you know, that's good. But, uh, but yeah, you read it and you're just like, this just does not seem like a Hallmark book. Yeah. 
And so it's yeah. interesting. Interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, so then when we talked about when we talked about the first episode and did our recap of yeah. it, that we thought that there was a lot of drama going on and so like maybe the book is more traumatic and that sort of thing versus like hallmark and so maybe there are well, there's a lot hitting... of drama in the book there's all the fighting but it's mainly between the it's it's between the women yeah and the sisters and it's so it, they, i mean it's a very there's a lot of conflict in the book but it's just not very like, there's just almost no romance hmm yeah so that's the that's the big difference ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes if the answer is yes please consider supporting the hallmarkies patreon we need your help to do what we do both during the christmas season and all year round but not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Uh, anyway, let's dive in to episode two. We have as Kitchen Clash begins filming, tensions between Franny's and Mimi's restaurants and sisters Amanda and May and their mother Gus are running high. So here we go. This episode, we have we find out that Franny's girls were debutantes and outstanding women and Mimi's girls were considered loose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the humanity. Oh, it's a stand in line and wherever you were, I guess. But, uh, and, uh, and basically that kind of carried with it through to, uh, <clears throat> it kind of carried with it the reason why, part of the reason why Amanda was, uh, that is part of the reason why Gus was so upset with Amanda for crossing over is not only is she, is she, you know, being disloyal, but she's like, she, I think that Gus saw it as some kind of judgment. That, yeah. That being like, what are you a, trying to say? Like, what are yeah, you trying that to being say a Mimi's girl wasn't good enough for her anymore. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. And uh, so that's, that's a whole dynamic going on right there. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh and may she's basically ashamed of her mother she's ashamed of her past and uh, and we find out there's this whole history between her and her friend kenneth yes so what did you think about kenneth uh and uh kind of his story uh and i guess that's more also in the next episode of the whole thing in new york yeah. But what did but what did you think it's going to kind of blend in as we talk about all yeah these i think so the first yeah. Uh, yeah the first two through five yeah and so what did you think about kenneth and his his arc through these episodes um i thought he was one of the more redeemable characters <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> but i still think there are moments of uh meanness uh him and his husband uh talking to frank jr when frank jr is in their hotel bar and won't leave and they're like he's like i'm waiting for the chicken man and they're like is this chicken man real <laughs> <laughs> but like but overall i thought like he seems very sweet um he owns the hotel the the fanciest hotel in town and he's married to oh gosh names peter Patrick, I think. Patrick. Okay, yeah. it starts with a P. I was close. <laughs> you, got, you did good. There's a lot of characters. <laughs> there though. are a lot of characters. <laughs> it's like oh, Game I... of Thrones up in here. I don't know who everyone <laughs> is. Well, but... I mean, if 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 my friend had just abandoned me on my trip to New York City, like my 
my best friend, one of my best friends, Jax, she lives in New York City. And if if I was going to see her and she just like didn't show and didn't see me, I would be so mad and so offended. Like she would never do that, first of all. But yeah. I'm just saying that that uh that like that's super rude. Yeah, I thought like he I would imagine like the event with May would have been traumatic considering that this is your best friend. And so I yeah. think what, what happened to him was terrible. And like, he was in New York city. It wasn't like the day before he was getting on the flight. He was there and she's all like, sorry, I got, what did she say? I got a show or something. Yeah. yeah. We all know you work at donkeys. Calm down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's like she's so afraid to let people in and she doesn't she wants to be better than where she's at in some ways, I guess. Um, She has big dreams, but she isn't there yet. And I think that has led her to treat other people poorly. So I think what happens where she ditches him in New York just shows that maybe she isn't a very good person. (laughs) Um, And then she continues like. In in this second episode, she says nothing good ever comes out of Marinac, and he's like, "What? What, are what you about me?" About? Yeah, like so he's offended by this, and she, she mm-hmm. just can, and that's part of the problem that this show has is that they just don't give you enough reason to root for any of these characters. Yeah, and he isn't in it long enough or no. enough for me to be like, "Well, he's the only redeemable character." That and. <laughs> uh amanda's daughter i think her name is frankie um she's about the only other redeemable character (laughs) there's moments where i'm rooting for nancy for leah thompson's character yeah Uh, i think she's she's like she really does try to like extend extend all branches to be understanding of amanda and and trying to be loving of frank jr and everything but she's so naive that it's yeah. also hard to kind of root for her as well. Well, I mean, she's caring to Frank Jr., but also I'm like, you coddled him, so now he's a terrible person as well. And <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. you sort of contributed to that person. And so, yeah, he's independent. Well, he isn't independent. <laughs> He is an individual person. Yeah. And so there should be some of that that is on him and the choices yeah. that he makes. But I think that he was allowed to behave in a certain way because of his mom, Nancy. Um, so I just feel like even the redeemable characters are connected to unredeemable characters because I think, is it Kevin? Yeah. His husband is kind of mean, <laughs> and, <laughs> but he, but he does hate May and there at least yeah. seems to be a good reason for that yeah um so <laughs> if somebody did that to me i don't think i would ever talk to him again like if 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 they truly just like abandoned me in new york city when i'd come out to visit them yeah I, 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 yeah that's terrible it's because where yeah. was he planning i mean the the good thing that came from it is if i remember correctly he meets his husband well, he- there. yeah so he's he's sad he's at the he's at the club or whatever yeah and then he meets patrick and then she tries to use that and be like oh see it wasn't that bad that i abandoned you i'm like no <laughs> just because god not... has a way of making things right doesn't absolve you like judas is no. not off the hook like yeah. <laughs> hey, well, that's like... the thing it's like you again this is not redeemable in any no. way so oh my gosh <laughs> yes and uh and so that's the problem it was kind of a nice moment in the second episode of like nancy kind of coming to her own and realizing how much she likes being on camera and yeah her kind of that was a fun like i'm seeing some growth for her but uh but uh we also get a moment between sergio and amanda and uh and him saying why do you do that with deflect when someone's kind to you and yeah. that's so easy to do in life mm-hmm. it, and and sometimes i think a like a false mod a uh, modesty a false humility can be can be just as prideful as anything else you know yeah and women do it tend to do this 
more than men in my experience. You know, the mm-hmm. idea of like you go into somebody's like beautifully decorated, oh, what a beautiful home you have. Oh, it's nothing, you know, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> what a beautiful it's- meal. Thank you so much for cooking all this. Oh, it was easy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like we don't yeah, want to acknowledge our greatness for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're not allowed to be proud of the things that we've done. Like, you know, thank you. I do love this house and I've put a lot of work into it or this recipe I've been perfecting for the last six months. So I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Like yeah. that apparently is problematic. Yeah. It, come, it, it, it It's a, a branch of sort of imposter syndrome of feeling like, well, if they really knew me, they would know that actually, yeah, this is, I'm not good at this. Yeah. I mean, I understand that I I'm, I'm in a job. <laughs> I just uh, had a year anniversary at my work, but I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing and, and should they have picked me and <laughs> yeah. a year I, later and I'm still like <laughs> imposter syndrome. <laughs> What's the thing about this, my work situation that's unique is that I always tell people, I'm like, I leave the criticism of the podcast or anything I do to other people. And I'm, and I've gotten it and it's fine. And I have no problem getting it. But as far as like personal introspection, I've never really Mm -hmm. felt like I could do it very well because everything that I do on the podcast is pretty much tied to a a friend memory. Right. And so like, it's weird for me to be like, I don't know, to be examining or critiquing my interactions with my friends. Be yeah. Like, well, that could have gone better or whatever. Like that's weird <laughs> to me. So I, <laughs> so I just leave it for other people and I just, you know, try to, if I get feedback, I try to, you know, apply it and improve in, in ways that I can, but I don't know. It's just kind of an un- unusual <laughs> work yeah. situation. Yeah. Me. But I, but I do think it's very easy again, especially as women, I think it's easy to do this deflecting. Mm -hmm. I I think it is. And it, it doesn't help you if you never acknowledge your, if you never have positive self-talk and you never allow other people to express Mm -hmm. positive things about yourself, then you're just stuck in this negative spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Or just thinking that that you're not good enough or Yeah. yeah, no, it's tough because imposter syndrome although it's fake is real. <laughs> yeah. So then this episode is it it ends with the with the sign Mimi's sign getting painted over with a big M by May. So yeah. Amanda is really hurt by that cuz that was kind of her last sort of gesture and part of Mimi's. Yeah, really so she sucks. created Amanda created that sign and so she's going to be connected to that. I feel like that's her one connection to Mimi's. Yeah. And then her sister ruins it. Yeah. Also in this episode, the teens get like, well, not arrested, but they get, uh, they get the a talking sheriff. to the sheriff. Yeah, I guess to. Talking to. <laughs> a talking to, but uh-huh. that's after Amanda comes in and sort of like, weren't you like this when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, this started where I was so shocked with everything between Sergi and Amanda. I could not believe that in a Hallmark show. So, <laughs> what? Like, she's a married woman. They yeah. not even separated, nothing. Like, that was very surprising to me. She's that they going go through there. a tough time. And I think, like, I can understand why it might not be in a Hallmark show. But I can understand, although it's not right, why, why people you know or I mean it makes get it makes Sergio it. seem kind of skeevy to me yeah that well that's the thing there are no this. there are very few redeemable characters on this show. <laughs> I mean I love actor of course he's super dreamy but yeah. the fact that he would be not predatory that's too strong but that he would even be sort of encouraging this at all like they well, I think I think what they needed to do is have her be like pretty forward instead of him being more more of the yeah. uh more forward because it or, just or i don't know it doesn't work well i think that he's going through a divorce and so you think he would wait until his divorce was final in which to yeah. even think about someone right. else whoever that might be 
but also like yeah isn't there like uh or don't we have unwritten rules anymore or written rules yeah. that you don't go after a married woman like come you on. certainly do in hallmark this is not like general hospital this is not like you know a soap opera this is supposed to be yeah this is hallmark we're talking about this is it, it. you want to push boundaries but you don't want to do with every character it's kind of like what you said last time that yes it's good to to go out of your comfort zone you don't need to it's good to break the rules but you don't need to break all the rules yeah because i thought we were about <laughs> meat, meat cutes and yeah. a married woman and a divorce and a newly divorced <laughs> guy isn't exactly the meat cute that everyone was thinking yeah, of exactly Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Acorns. Investing can feel intimidating and most people don't know where to start. I remember when I first started investing, it was very overwhelming. That's where Acorns comes in. Acorns makes it easy to start automatically saving and investing in your future. Acorns is an app that recommends an expert built portfolio that fits you and your money goals. And you don't need a lot of money or expertise to invest with them. In fact, you can get started with Acorns with just your spare change. Head to acorns.com slash hallmarkies or download the Acorns app. Start saving and investing for your future today. This is a paid non-client endorsement. Compensation provides incentive to positively promote Acorns. Investing involves risk. Acorns Advisors LLC an SEC registered investment advisor. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash hallmarkies. Head over to acorns.com slash hallmarkies or download the Acorns app to start saving and investing for the future today. That's acorns.com slash hallmarkies. Episode three, it says Franny's and Mimi's cruise tries to one up each other as the kitchen clash competition amps up, but their methods leave sisters Amanda and May conflicted. So uh, Amanda's very upset about the sign. May is trying to defend that, you know, oh, it was just a joke, I guess. And they're, so they start like pranking each other. Um, Prank? Oh my God. <laughs> um, was the tea, was that in, um, was that in this episode? Sorry, they get a yeah, little confusing. Yeah, the tea happened first. The tea happened first. Okay, yeah. So that's right. Um, and then And then they bought all the chickens. So and, that happens in this episode. So May, yeah. uh, so May, um, okay, yeah. So it's in episode three when the tea, when she tampers with the tea, and makes it salty, and and so then uh, everybody's even more offended, and then yeah, and then May buys all the chicken, so then there's no chicken for Franny's, and then they charge thirty percent above the price that was paid for it. Which I'm surprised that none of them have thought of doing this sooner. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? All the years of this feud. This seems but like it's a no-brainer. Also like, well, it just seems terrible. Like, just let people have their business. Like, you don't need to... I mean, May painting over the sign ruins Mimi's business. So that's the one that she's connected to. So it doesn't impact Franny's in a negative way. But when Amanda goes in and she tampers with the tea that impacts Mimi's business and then buying all the chicken impacts Franny's business, right? Like it goes back and forth where they're actually sabotaging each other. And that is really, I just revenge. I I don't know. I don't like it. It's not a good look. No. I mean, and especially if they know everything's going to be filmed and, and, (laughs) <laughs> I guess they just forget that everything's being filmed because they always will look up and be like, oh, crap, that was being well, filmed. Can, can we pause here for a second and talk about this TV show? What the hell yeah. are they actually filming? <laughs> like, I don't... Well, also, in the grand spirit of Hallmark, they don't have a single boom mic. They don't have a single... <laughs> I mean, there's like a camera and that's about it. You know? <laughs> You're like, yeah, sure. But you think like there'd be an introduction to each people and then some sort of competition or something. And that's not happening. It's basically like, hi, we're here and this thing is happening. And it, and I'm like, what are you, I don't understand (laughs) what the TV show is. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and they have them all set up to do, uh, to do Franny's and then they're like, oh, um we let's do mimi's instead i'm like that's not the way television works like just because you don't have any chicken doesn't mean that they can like completely reset 
the entire uh the entire you know one camera everything. yeah they can I mean, when they only have one camera but I, yeah if they don't have any boom mic any sound any lighting any <laughs> sure <laughs> i mean food network is 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 uh tighten their budgets let's just put it that way well i just that's the one thing I mean, there's so much drama and everything, but there's literally none necessarily around the actual TV show. It's like the TV show brought May to the situation. Amanda had to talk to Gus, like all these things. And then so it brings everything to a head because of the TV show. But then they're not actually like feuding yeah, because someone's winning it. the competition or anything like that. It's right. just like, I mean, this is going to be the weirdest episode of Kitchen Clash ever. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true, and and it like it's like it's a whole season or something because they're I mean they're taking a lot of video. But it but it's like a whole time, reality not like, show, not just one episode. <laughs> well, and it's like that doesn't even make sense. Like, isn't there a comp Kitchen Clash? Like, who, when are you tasting the food? Like, who's right, tasting yeah. the food? It's what are true. you filming like it just doesn't make sense <laughs> right like yeah like if it's a show like diners drive-ins and dives where they're just profiling then i could yeah. you know then it would make sense but but yeah we're, you're right for like some kind of competition sort of thing there there needs to be some kind of structure you know to yeah. it okay like today we're trying chicken and then tomorrow yeah. we're trying coleslaw or or, yeah. you know tomorrow's chicken sandwich day and or whatever like you figured out but, uh, but yeah, the the, uh, the pretty much the show is only a tool, like you said, to bring the 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 two rival families together, and for Sabrina to to have drama. Uh, yeah. But as far as the mechanics of the show, it's it's pretty worthless. <laughs> it's pretty worthless. I forgot um, that they were on Kitchen Clash. I was like, yeah. oh. And then the last episode, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I was like, oh, there's the cameras. I forgot about them. Yeah. <laughs> it really is more like keeping up with the Kardashians than it is than it is a cook a cooking show. But yeah. uh, how do you feel about Frank Jr. I mean, I feel like his character is very inconsistent. Like he'll have these like kind of sweet moments, these tender moments. He'll have nice moments and then like just be a complete jerk. And a complete, you know, like, and, and I feel like most toxic people, the reason why they're so manipulative is that they kind of play the part of mm -hmm. being thoughtful and considerate or whatever. And, but, but they, and they use that to kind of control, manipulate, and maybe that's why they show him being nicer at moments, like him cleaning up and staying late in this episode and you know i write down that was a nice moment between amanda and frank um but then he's like lying to her about the vasectomy he's you know he he and then he, you know he's drinking five beers and um just different stuff like i just feel like his character's kind of all over the place i think he's terrible yeah <laughs> i'm like i'm like he can't even run the business that is supposed to be his for a night without having five beers and freaking out and i want to be like yeah owning a business i imagine i don't own one and the reason why i don't is because they're hard work <laughs> and like the fact that amanda and his mom do all of the work uh it bothers me and so like i think he has these moments where his mom reminds him of his dad or inspires mm -hmm. him in some way and he's like i'm gonna wear a tie today and then it's right. like but by the end of the day it's like he, he's drinking he, five beers he specifically can't be consistent he can't behave in the same way to change yeah. but he can behave in the way that makes him terrible which is <laughs> basically everyone else does everything for him and he doesn't do anything well so then nancy says you're so close to being who you want to be and and he says or who you want me to be oh snap so <laughs> who does he want to who does he want to be he just wants to sit at home and have his wife bring food and beer and not have to work and he sounds terrible i would not want to be his partner it's no. not a partner it's not That's a partnership sure. no. it's not a partnership i am not here 
to take care of a full grown human being that yeah. yeah. No, well, sorry. He makes yeah, me mad. I mean <laughs> and and especially like all the time. I mean, everybody wants to be cared for, you know, yeah. by their partner on occasion, you know, or like just those thoughtful, sweet moments. But he doesn't recognize when those moments are happening. And he, he just takes everything, so many things for granted that yeah. it's, uh, maybe then that's part of the, when he does have like a thoughtful moment, it comes off as kind of phony and it's, yeah. just, it's just an interesting character uh, yeah. f- for them to have. Um, but we also have Amanda. So she gets really upset and she breaks in to Mimi's and she starts like destroying things. She's like emptying like the all flower. the flower. She's yeah. like cutting into it. Yeah. And uh Sergio finds her and he's he's upset and and I just do not believe for a second that she would do this. It did not yeah. seem authentic. And she says, Well, I'm trying to be somebody different. I'm tired, I'm tired of being good all the time. But there's I don't know. There's a difference between being rebellious and like being malicious. <laughs> yeah, and this just seems like really like mean and very childish. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying is that when one person does something and another person does something back, then they feel like they have to get them back and then they have yeah. to get them back and they have to get them back and the behavior Especially comes- if you knew cameras were watching and we're going to that this was what could all be somehow, you know, uh, the next day, it could be on, you know, on uh, on videotape. It just seems it seems stupid to me, and just it makes us not like her that she would yeah. do this. Well, and I don't like that scene in particular because it continues, and he says something about being present or something like that. Uh huh. Or like he seems upset with her for what she's doing, and then she says like. I don't want to be good, good all, the, all time. the time. And he says something to her, like, we'll be present or something like that. And then she goes and she kisses him. And I'm like, okay. The problem is, <laughs> first off, that she's married. Second off, he continues to kiss her, even mm. though she has just participated in terrible behavior. <laughs> And why is that not a turn Yeah, off? it's it's really a five car pile up of bad choices. And like <laughs> the thing that it's one thing to have characters making bad choices. I don't have a problem with that in a show, but I felt like they wanted us to think that was somehow swoony or romantic. Like, okay, if you want to have your character have an affair, it, okay, you know, I I can deal with that. But don't expect me to be like, oh, so romantic. Look at, you know, yeah. Sergio. Like, don't expect me to, you know, to sort of get invested in their, in their, in this romance. It what? should have been an embarrassing moment for her that yes. she was caught, that she participated in this behavior, and he should have refused to kiss her back because Agreed. behavior, like, that's not like, hey, I find her really attractive right now after she's done this terrible behavior. Let me kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Well, and that could have been more romantic in the end because he's playing hard, you know, kind of hard to get. And Maybe. and then like the back and the forth and the like that could rather than like it was just it was very easy. Uh and it just I don't know. It just made you dislike yeah. her when we should yeah. be rooting for her because she's in this not happy marriage. Just not great. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just not yeah. happy about it. And so then we see Nancy, she sees the kiss. So there we go. Uh, the drama. So now we're on episode four. We learn more about Sergio, his divorce. They're having a divorced and thriving party. Um, <laughs> and then the big drop in the the <laughs> leggings vendor. I don't know what that lady is. Her name is. But anyway, she's like the big gossip of the town. She's the big character. And so she has. It's basically LuLaRoe is what they're doing. And, you know, where the they would have these pants, these leggings. They'd have these leggings party. And if you want to see a pretty entertaining documentary, Lula Rich uh, on uh, on Amazon, it's pretty good. Ooh. 
is pretty interesting. Uh, I like but, a good doc. I yeah, like good yeah. Doc. And so there, it's the big drop of the new designs that is happening. And basically, it's a chance to, like, get all the gossip going on. And, of course, they want that in the, uh, since, again, since this is not just our episode, this is, like, a whole season. <laughs> Chicken Sisters uh, Kitchen Clash. Uh, they want to have that on camera as well. And we have had a number of scenes with Sabrina flirting with Hot Handyman. Yes. And that's been Which, kind of what fun. is his name? It's like I don't know his name. something I, Duster or I don't know. I was like, what is your name? I, I don't know his name. I just call him Hot Handyman. Okay. Um he's just Hot Handyman. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is fun. Like these are characters who are both available. I can get I can have fun with this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But she's not a redeemable character either. <laughs> yeah. So we also have in the previous episode, we do have a scene between May and Gus saying, uh, saying, sh- saying you chose this over me. May says that. And, uh, and so the, you know, that's another thing that just is tough because she's just not very likable. <laughs> yeah. May, well, was she, it, do you mean that she chose like the hoarding over yeah. her daughter? Okay. Sorry, I just want to be yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what you. May says to Gus. Mm-hmm. May yeah. says that to Gus. Yeah, and so that gives some background on their upbringing, but it doesn't mm-hmm. give them an excuse to, you know, behave badly. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I guess, again, if each of these things, like, in and of themselves would be fine as a part of a show, but when they're combined in total that's when Mm -hmm. it becomes too much like i'd be fine with with may having a moment where she's honest with her mom and saying this ruined my life like yeah this was horrible you chose these possessions over our happiness and safety Uh, that's fine but like when it's all in combination with everything else is what the problem is yeah you know and like if there we saw some growth you know with each character as they confront each other or yeah that doesn't happen we haven't right? seen much like, no we so really have definitely not a growth mindset here <laughs> <laughs> so nancy is just pretending she didn't see anything she's yep. just like you know and she says marriage is hard work and she tells amanda you can't keep going down that path which is good advice but also like it's not really helpful to just bury things either so yeah. uh, so, so it's only like half the advice that she so should be given so has she given her son the same advice mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that we learn in the drop episode that is one of the pieces of gossip is that you know someone is like amanda's in the bathroom and she's pregnant and and then the character with the Lulu Row leggings, who we don't know her name, we'll call her Lulu. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, she can't be pregnant because Frank Jr. came in and got a vasectomy, and that was said in front yeah. of everybody. And so, like, so he's... that's the big, big. That's the big drop. This yeah. this episode is that, and I mean, I don't think Nancy has any idea of that. Uh, yeah. But she does know that he's an alcoholic. She's very aware yeah. of that. So she's certainly aware of Frank Jr.'s flaws. I mean, I don't think that he's ever had any kind of dalliance from his marriage as far as any other women. women. We've not gotten that. But still, I mean, she does tell him when she sees him with the five beers. She, I mean, she's she's the one who says, you're so close to me who you want to be. So she yeah. she is... I think in her mind she would say, "Oh, I I've, I've been equally I've been the same to both Frank Jr. and to uh and to Amanda." But mm-hmm. but uh I I think it's not quite the same, but I think she would probably think it's the same. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? but when she hears the vasectomy news, I'm sure she's like, yeah. "What?" Yeah. I mean, that's huge news. Huge news and of course, Amanda's extremely upset. Uh, Amanda leaves a text message for Sergio, which is just stupid because this person literally works for your mom. I mean, it's not like it's somebody that, oh, I just met them on the train or something. Like, 
Yeah. You know, like this is somebody you are going to see on a regular basis. It's a small town. It's stupid. You just have yeah. to, you know, have that conversation. Um, and then Sergio sees it uh, and he, we gets, it was nice that we got Hector singing. <laughs> yeah. I can fall in love with you. Cause he's yeah. a great singer. He's been on Broadway. He's, he's a, he's a great singer. So I was kind of, and I don't think we've ever seen any of that in any of his, certainly any of his Hallmark roles. So I was, yeah. I was kind of, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. So I liked that him doing karaoke and, uh, and you could tell, I mean, a big hit, like hint hint the frank jr is completely worthless uh work <laughs> business wise is he didn't even know the code for the for the fire alarm like that's bonkers that like he would not know how to turn off the alarm the list is just long <laughs> i'm not saying that i like amanda but <laughs> oh god yeah what? yeah he's like take control of your life and be <laughs> A business owner like how can you be a business owner and not know the code like yeah so then we get uh this scene with gus standing up for may and then may uh standing up for her family and then she like spills the beans about her past and everything and everybody's kind of like we don't care like okay <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, and, I think she's a little bit more concerned about what people think of her than what people actually yeah, think of her. Which is true in, in general in life. I mean, yeah. Most people are not thinking about us. We think that they're thinking about us, but they're like thinking about their lives and their choices. Yeah. And they're not thinking about unless you do something epically bad. And then usually that's only for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that that's true to life. But uh then we have gus calling cardi wong's character the doctor uh who's married he's there with his wife in in bed taking the call and so something's going on there and and then we don't hear the phone call we just see them calling and i still think there's something else going on than what they're uh, trying to lead us to believe mm, is going on i don't maybe maybe because none of this is like none of that's in the book. The only thing that's in the book is the stuff with May and I think is Jay, the yeah. her boyfriend, fiance, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's really the only romance in the book. Hmm. Interesting. That's like extended. Uh, I mean, you have Frank Jr. and Amanda, but it's it's just not not as not the same. It doesn't so. seem like romance. <laughs> no, um, and then. Uh, so May comes clean to the fiance, and and we find out that that Sabrina that, she, that so her and May were after the same job, and May always felt like Sabrina was trying to kind of one up her as far as like the fancy lunches, and she thought that she was like super rich. Turns out she mm-hmm. wasn't, and she was trying to get this particular job so that she could get primary custody custody of the daughter uh mm-hmm. and then she didn't get it so she didn't get custody and, and so that's why they don't like each other that's why she doesn't like yeah. me so yeah well and i feel like and you can correct me if i'm wrong that may overheard about the job from sabrina and and then went for the job that she mm-hmm. didn't actually know about it so oh yeah she knew she that knew sabrina right. Yeah, she knew Sabrina was going for the job and then she went for it anyways. So Which Amanda, is questionable too. <laughs> yeah, so Amanda confronts Frank Jr. about the vasectomy and uh, and then you see her trying to stay at her mom's and, and then in the next episode find out that she couldn't stay there. And it turns out that her mom wanted her to stay there but she just, the house isn't, a, isn't, isn't available, isn't ready. Yeah yeah because because she's a hoarder Mm-hmm. yeah so so the stuff is oh. everywhere so they yeah they show her in amanda's bedroom and there's just boxes and everything so mm-hmm. yeah and all i wanted to tell people too there is uh if you're looking for in-depth long recaps of chicken sisters there's a site called fangirlish.com where they have uh they have in-depth episode reviews 
Uh, so if you want even more than what we can provide <laughs> on this episode, you should check that out. It, they're really, really good and have a good perspective and everything. So looking for a nice, warm, fuzzy read about the love story of a married couple? After the Red Carpet by Patricia Levy is the perfect guilty pleasure read to curl up with and turn your brain off for a moment. In this highly anticipated steamy follow-up to the location shoot, will Ella and Finn finally live the life they've dreamed of? The couple vows to to prioritize their romance and live an adventure of their own making. Ella moves into Finn's Beverly Hills mansion and must adjust to his world. Finn is determined to make everything perfect for his betrothed, secretly afraid of losing her. Meanwhile, Ella wants nothing more than to retain her own identity as they build their new life together. All the while, she is writing a philosophical treatise on love, exploring the question, when we love so deeply, where do we end and where does the other begin? Find After the Red Carpet by Patricia Levy wherever you purchase your books or use the affiliate link below. That's After the Red Carpet by Patricia Levy. Uh, So episode five, we get a little bit of a backstory and find out that May was kind of responsible for protecting Amanda from from, uh, the mess, from just keeping her safe from everything with their mom. And, and then she tries to stop her from marrying Frank Jr. Mm-hmm. And, and they, and she's basically like kicks her out of the wedding. Like, how could you do this? And, mm-hmm. and then we find out that, that eventually Amanda didn't want protection, but Amanda was the person who stayed. Uh, and, and that's the big difference between the two of them. And, and so, I don't know. I thought that was an interesting dynamic. I mean, mm-hmm. I can really, I mean, I have three sisters uh, and they're, they're all, but um, I mean, two of them are a lot younger than me. Um, mm-hmm. So I can, I can understand a little bit of that feeling of like wanting pr- to protect because they were so much younger than, mm-hmm. you know, I was. Um, one was born when I was 18. So (laughs) yeah, it's just a different situation dynamic in this episode is that, so Frankie, uh, the teenage daughter, she, uh, really wants them to make up and get back Mm -hmm. together, but she's not really paying attention to her mom. And it's Mm -hmm. not until the end when Amanda is back kind of caring for Frank jr uh, and in sort of subver- subver- subservient that she starts, you see this kind of look in her eyes, like, oh, this is yeah. what's happening. I, I feel like she just wanted her parents back so bad that she came up with something and helped her dad come up with the words to use to sort of get Amanda back. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, because when he sang it to Amanda, the flowers and the, yeah, you know. the daughter is mouthing the words at the same time so she's mm-hmm. like helped her dad do this but then that realization is probably the best moment of the tv show so far because i'm like finally someone gets it frank jr's terrible <laughs> well and and the narrator says when she says she couldn't break up with frank because that meant would mean losing nancy yeah yeah which That's I think tough. is got to be a, a tough part about divorce is because y- you're because y- you marry a whole family. It's not just the one yep. person. And then all of a sudden, all these people are out of your life. Yeah. Especially if it's nasty. That's got to be extremely hard. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Families uh, can be tough situations. That's yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. And. And so then you have this, uh, you have Amanda, she's staying at the leg leggings lady, this house. And they're like, (laughs) sorry, you got to go. You can only be here one night. So she's just trying to figure it out. And she goes over to the hotel. She's Kenneth. And, and, uh, basically there's only one because the kitchen collapses. There's, she has to stay with me. So that starts Mm -hmm. this kind of situation. And, uh, and then you get the scene between Nancy and Gus um and they're you know fighting and and (laughs) and, there's a water hose involved (laughs) yes (laughs) and and then we get a little break with hot handyman and sabrina he he gives her the uh, hangover cure (laughs) yeah because she's hung over from the drop 
that gossip right, night from is the drop like the top <laughs> party of the year you don't miss it yeah yeah so then we have um uh then we have nancy talking to the pastor i think the pastor is being a he, he needs to step it up because these people <laughs> need more guidance than he's giving. yeah yeah they really. need your help sir <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh and then we have uh amanda saying to may you must love seeing me crash and burn which is yeah. hard well yeah her mm-hmm. whole life is sort of blown up she's trying to get this tv show to help the business and help their life but yeah. it's like her daughter doesn't seem to be 100 percent like all about mom or like supporting mom i mean yeah. even from the very first episode like she's like god mom. you know it's like a teenager yeah. mother relationship uh <laughs> I but think like the challenge sometimes with sibling relationships is that they're a relationship that you do not choose and they are always with you all the time and of course you love them but but you may have nothing in common with this person except yeah. for the fact that you happen to be related right and yeah. and so they're not somebody, they may not be somebody that you would choose to be in a relationship with, but yeah. you are in one. So you have to make it work and it can be hard. Yeah. Well, hard. sibling relationships are the longest relationships we have. And yeah. the thing they have in common is, you know, growing up together and that common, uncommon experience of being in the same house. Um And so I think like there's obviously a rivalry between Amanda and May Yeah. and and Amanda's at this point where everything is sort of blown up. Like Frank Jr.'s had the vasectomy and she's not there anymore. She's been sabotaging the businesses and that isn't going well. (laughs) It's like everything, it's like a very low moment for her. So I think it's Mm -hmm. very hard for her to have to stay with May in the hotel. Yeah, because yeah, of definitely. everything that's, that's happened. So then Frankie talks to Frank Jr. about her mom, and I, I, you remember how she takes care of you? And she says, I can't imagine her not by your side. And so he's he's like, okay, okay. And, uh, and then we also get Amanda admitting to May about her crush on Sergio. Oh. And that they kissed. And they kissed. And it's, and then they uh, they have this like a little pillow fight or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then we have uh, Sabrina, the daughter, um, is upset about, uh, Sabrina's daughter is upset about her dad. Mm-hmm. Her dad's remarrying, I think. Yep. Yeah, he's getting married to a 25-year-old. Yeah. And and so then May realizes she messed up with Jay, so she's gonna uh, apologize. And then uh, they this is when we get the the hose fight between uh, between Nancy and Gus. Yeah. And then Frank Jr. apologizes to Amanda. Do you want to break up this family? Hmm. And she couldn't break up with Frank because that meant losing Nancy. And then Amanda says to May, just because you ruined your relationship doesn't mean I have to do the same. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, yeah that was, that was tough. <laughs> yeah, that was cold. <laughs> um, so then. But completely on par for everything that we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah. So then Frankie sees her mom is subservient to Frank Jr. And she's kind of looking around like, oh, shoot. And, uh, says gus didn't have room in her heart so gus had room in her heart for amanda she just didn't have room in her house yeah that's how it ends yeah oh yeah (laughs) i think it's interesting there's um one point where may when amanda leaves to be with frank jr and frankie's there and she's like i'm gonna have to figure out how to stop protecting your sister or, or your mother or something like that and so the episode really sort of focused on at the beginning, the protecting Amanda when they were younger and she's still trying to do it, but like, maybe that isn't working out so well. And so yeah. she's got to figure out what else to do. 
Because she can't protect her if, if she's not even in her life. Yeah. You know? So, uh, so yeah, it's not really working. Uh, I, yeah, I'm trying to think which of these episodes I think is probably the best episode. Mm. I like the drop. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best episode. Yeah, I agree. The drop. <laughs> this was probably the best episode. Uh, but yeah, I'm still not feeling the show, but let us know if you are watching and you're enjoying it, uh, what you enjoy about it, which character you like the best. We'd love to hear in the comment section or on Twitter. If you read the book, we'd love to hear what you think of the book. And, uh, we'll have that interview next week with KJ. So make sure to look out for that. And, uh, Elisa, where can people find you these days? Yep. I'm on Instagram at Mona Lisa 14 and I post about the books I read and about my pets. So get ready for dogs and cats. <laughs> Great. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure that you're following the podcast at Hallmark's pod and Hallmark's podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that, especially this time of year. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.